Okay, I've kind of sat on the topic for a while now, haven't I? We have not made a video talking about the Vancouver Canucks and the 2022 draft. We've spoken about these two topics separately, but never really together. Mostly because I just wanted to take some time to let it sink in first. Really allow us to feel excited again. Because I can say, as a Vancouver Canucks fan who has not had the pleasure of seeing his team draft in the first round the past three years now... It is kind of like, okay, really? They have a first-round pick? No way. They actually have somebody now. It feels a little bit different, since the team really hasn't used a first-round selection since 2019. So, the Vancouver Canucks, in this year's 2022 NHL Draft Lottery, got themselves the 15th overall selection. Which isn't a surprise. They had, what was it, like a 98% chance at staying there at 15th overall, and that is indeed what happened. They were the second best team in the NHL to enter the draft lottery, the first one being Vegas. Of course, their first round pick is taken by Buffalo from the Eichel trade, so it is not Vegas at 16th overall, it is Buffalo. But, with the Vancouver Canucks being in the position they're at, 15th overall provides a pretty good opportunity at potentially getting some nice players. Don Taylor had a tweet here from a few days ago talking about some older 15th overall picks. Mike Bossy, Al McInnes, Kovalev, Sakic, Larkin, JT Miller, Cole Caulfield, a whole bunch of players that have been taken in the 15th overall spot have been fantastic. However, you know, just taking a look at the sample size, there are players taken at every spot that have probably been fantastic. So this is really going to depend on where the Vancouver Canucks decide to take their scouting and what kind of player they choose to use the pick on. That is, if they actually do decide to use the pick. This is a tweet summarizing what Thomas Dran said on Donnie and Dolly from a few days ago. He's talking about the Vancouver Canucks in the first round of the draft. I wouldn't be stunned by them moving up, but I think moving back in the draft order is honestly a pretty likely possibility too. That's something they will strongly consider. Now, I know there are some people that could like cynically poke at this tweet. Oh, look at that. Some introspective analysis by Drance right there. Oh, they could move up. They could move down. Who knows? But like, it is a possibility here for the Vancouver Canucks to actually assess their options in a way that we're not really used to. And when I say that, I say, okay, moving up or moving down, because when was the last time Jim Benning freaking moved up or moved down with any of his draft picks? It's never happened inside the first round. The guy took over in 2014, he used his 2014 first on Vertanen, he used the Anaheim first from the Kessler trade on Jared McCann. 2015, Brock Besser, that's it, they stayed put. 2016, Yule Levy. 2017, Pedersen. 2018, Hughes. 2019, Pud Colson. 2020, they traded away that pick in the JT Miller trade. 2021, they traded it away for Connor Garland and OEL. So, Jim Benning was never in a position to use his firsts and move up or move down, and therefore... Dran's coming out here with this big brain take saying, oh, the Canucks might actually think about doing that now. I do think there is some value in bringing up that this is a possibility now because we're just not used to seeing that as Canucks fans. It's been eight freaking years of Jim Benning just staying put or trading the picks away entirely. So it appears that the Vancouver Canucks will, at the very least, actually get themselves a first round caliber player this year, which is exciting to me because I have been a pretty good follower of the draft the past few seasons. We've been making videos, scouting report videos, talking about all the guys that could be going in this year's crop of players, and Vancouver snagging up any of them is something that I like for sure. Now, what we're going to do is go over onto Elite Prospects and talk about some of the guys that are ranked in the 15th overall spot. I know I'm kind of ripping off Daniel Wagner's article because he did something similar on VancouverIsAwesome.com. You can go ahead and click the link in the description on that. But what I wanted to do was take a look at the top scouting outlets here on Elite Prospects. So, Future Siderations, Bob McKenzie, Craig Button, Elite Prospects themselves, Neutral Zone, and McKean's, not to mention Sportsnet as well. There are a few other outlets here as well, so we can probably take a look at those if we have the time. And I just wanted to go over and see who was ranked in the 15th overall spot on all of these lists, starting out with the Future Considerations list. Their 15th overall player is Gleb Trikazov, and this is a really interesting name that I honestly would be sort of surprised to see him go to Vancouver, mostly because I don't really know if he's going to be a first-round player. Now, I think he's a first-round caliber guy, that's for sure. He's so skilled, so fantastic in the MHL. He had 45 points in 35 games for Omsky Yasterby this previous season, but... 
When it comes to the coverage and the overall media spotlight on this guy, there really isn't much going his way comparative to other players that have had all the Canadian broadcasters talking about him, like Connor Geeky, etc., etc. I mean, you know what they always say, right? It only takes one team to go out there and say that they like the player, and Gleb Trikazov is a guy that I've seen scouts on Twitter rank as high as number four. I mean, the highest rank over here is 14th overall by Smot Scouting, so maybe he goes somewhere in the first round, but Gleb Trikazov is a very skilled, very good in offensive transition. There's a lot to like with this player. I will say, if the Canucks did draft this guy, I actually would be pretty happy with it, all things considered. Going over on to Bob McKenzie's top 32, his 15th overall player is Isaac Howard, a guy that we have made a video about on the channel. He is a very good offensive player as well. He's kind of in that same mold as a Dawson Mercer, where he's very good in the offensive zone. He's got good skills, he reads the play well. However, off the puck and in his own zone, you kind of expect a little bit more than what he usually goes out there and does, because you know that he is capable of a lot more. When he really wants to get involved, he can be, but in the offensive zone, that is where he shines and where he really does expand upon the skills that he has. He had 82 points in 60 games played for the NTDP this season, and playing alongside of Frank Nazer, who was one of the better finishers of the draft, Isaac Howard definitely is a very interesting name to watch. He is heading over to the Minnesota Duluth Bulldogs for 2022-2023. If the Canucks ended up getting Howard in the draft at 15th overall as well, hey, I'd like that pick too. It's a pretty good one. You have yourselves Craig Button, who also has a list over here. He's got Ivan Moroshnyshenko as his 15th overall prospect, which is really interesting to me. Now, Moroshnyshenko is in a very peculiar spot where I personally don't know if he should get drafted that high anymore. Not necessarily because, oh, he's talented or he's not talented, but because the guy has cancer and he has indeed been on the recovery path. Now, I'm not going to go out there and say that, oh, because he has cancer, you shouldn't draft him. I'm just saying that if you have a guy that is getting taken at 15th overall, that is a pretty high pick. You need to be 100% certain that the guy you're taking here is going to help your franchise, especially if you're Alvin and Rutherford, and you're in a position where this is a brand new team, you're here for the first year, you really have an opportunity to change the direction of the franchise within these next few months. You gotta get off on the right foot. And for me personally, again, I haven't talked to the guy, I don't know anything about his situation other than the diagnosis that he had, which was a non-Hodgkin lymphoma. If the Vancouver Canucks feel like this is the best pick at 15, hey, there still is a lot more to like about his profile that he has exhibited in the past. He was a very good scorer in the Russian leagues when he was there. You go over to some of the other rankings over here, though. Elite prospects themselves, if you go to 15th overall, they have Owen Pickering out of the Swift Current Broncos. He doesn't have the same offensive flair that other defensemen in the WHL like Denton Matejchuk and Kevin Korczynski have displayed, but what you do have in Pickering is a very potentially solid top four bet at being a two-way defenseman at the NHL level. For me personally, I don't know if the Vancouver Canucks need another left-handed two-way defenseman in the top of their draft slot this year, mostly because, I mean, long term, you have Rathbone, you have OEL, you have Hughes, I don't really know if Pickering is that guy that would provide the most value to the team. And besides, there are some other players that I do think could display more translatable development paths. For Owen Pickering, he's so raw that he's going to have to go through a lot more work than some of the other guys that could be available in this draft. However, if the Vancouver Canucks do decide to take him, I will put my fate in Alvin and Rutherford and trust the process for sure. Let's go over onto McKean's hockey right now because their 15th overall selection is Marco Casper out of Regla in the SHL. Now, Marco Casper is interesting because he's an Austrian guy playing in the SHL, playing for Regla, so Niels Hoaglander's old team. And Casper is one of these players that isn't really going to go out there and dazzle the lights out with his point production, but rather his overall solid play everywhere on the ice instead. Marco Casper certainly is not the most dynamic offensive player on the board, but he's a really safe bet to being a middle six NHL forward. He's got a solid 200-foot game that has allowed him to stay in the SHL full-time this season. And for the Vancouver Canucks, you know you like those guys that are responsible at both ends of the ice, so maybe they decide to go out there and take a run on the guy that could be their third-line center down the line. It really depends on who you ask. Going over onto the final ranking over here, Sportsnet has Owen Pickering as well as their 15th overall player, so that's kind of the territory that we're seeing, I think, the prospects in this range for the Vancouver Canucks to potentially target. Marco Casper, Owen Pickering, there are some other guys over here, Frank Nazar, Jimmy Snuggerud, 
Philip Mishar is also one that's been thrown around here and there too. So the Vancouver Canucks, lo and behold, if they actually decide to use the pick at 15th, I do think they're going to walk away with a prospect that is worth paying attention to. Whether or not they move up or move down, that remains to be seen. I just hope Jim Rutherford and Alvin do not follow the path of Jim Benning and just trade the pick away straight up for a roster player that is only going to get involved in trade conversations in the next year and a bit. Because I'm kind of done with that story, aren't you? Talk to me in the comments all your thoughts about the Vancouver Canucks and their 15th overall pick. Who do you think they should draft, assuming they stay in the 15th overall spot? And what other moves do you think they could make at the draft instead, should you not see the Canucks take a player at 15th overall? Let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. I hope you enjoyed this British Rolls 99. And bye. <laughs>